I was bang on, I think. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening guys? My name is Chris and I'm Paul and welcome back to The Tattoo Show. This is going to be the beginning of a new series that we're doing and it's all based on digital workflow. Um, Paul is going to be the main man going through a lot of topics and I'm going to be asking the questions I would think you would probably ask because there's a lot of stuff that he's going to be covering and I have no fucking idea. <laughs> so it's going to be a learning experience for us all. So uh, I'm going to pass over to Paul now and he's going to give you a lowdown on what we're going to be doing in lesson number one. Lesson number one. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, what he's saying in code is that lesson number one, Paul is covering the boring shit. Right, so yeah, uh, <laughs> this is the stuff that um, I wouldn't expect many tattooists to have any interest in because uh, I haven't, except that um, I don't like losing things. You know what I mean? And I don't like um, I, I don't like being disorganised, especially when you're busy. So all of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about in this episode is uh, stuff that you can set up today. Excuse me. A terrible, terrible heartburn. I had a fucking awful <laughs> curry last night. It's still killing me. Um, but you don't need to know that. Um, <laughs> so this is... The, so, <laughs> it's going in, though. <laughs> it is what it is. So, uh, so this is the stuff that um, you can set up now and forget about it. It'll save you, believe me, it'll save you a shitload of time and a shitload of heartache when you don't lose an email, you don't lose a file, uh, you don't lose a client's form and the, the, their information and, you, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. And we're going to try and... Uh, I'm going to try and get through it in as interesting a way as I can. In truth, it's not that interesting, but what is interesting about it is you can forget about it once it's done. The, the great thing about about working like this and getting yourself set up like this is that it just becomes very streamlined and I'm a really big fan of letting the computers do the really boring stuff but you do have to set them up to do it do you find it makes you way more efficient then just generally like once you've done all this boring shit do you find like it, it makes you more efficient afterwards then in regards to like booking people in getting your design sorted uh, consultations and especially like the way we're going to be going forward now where a lot of us are going to probably have to do like online like video call consultations like so yeah do you think it will help i do mate i really do i think t for me personally i think it does two things um but by getting organized like this uh it, it the first thing it does is it, it gives the client a real reassurance because you know there's a, a level of professionalism and organization and it just there's a lot of communication for them that is automated and it really feels like they're okay this is happening and i'm doing it and because because we once you've got yourself set up, you can communicate with them much easier. You remember what you were talking yeah. about. You remember what the you know oh it was a design on your upper arm and it's a picture of a monkey or something like that. You know and yeah and it, it helps that it, it does help with the client when they when they sort of that you remember them and you remember their design. Now in truth, you might have to try and remember two hundred designs at a time and it you know, it's quite hard. Oh, yeah. But if you've got the stuff but in like front of you. And like sometimes yeah, some like sometimes like you you might tattoo somebody and not see them for like two or three years, which is has happened to me and I'm like for just as an example, right? I had uh, my MacBook. Yeah. And what was a MacBook Pro? Yeah, MacBook Pro. I'm a MacBook Pro, I had all my clients' designs on it. Some of them I haven't seen for like fucking two or three years gets water damaged lost all my designs and like these people are coming in and i'm just like yeah sorry, sorry man i ain't got it no more so now so here's the upshot of that so i we were talking about this in the jesse smith episode that we did and i was saying that i tattooed a client who had the tattoo for three years had worn it for three years and this was in the context of ink not being light fast actually the client came back to me three years later having had worked for an entire summer in a bar and the orange element of the tattoo had, had faded really, really badly. Yeah. Because I've done this boring stuff now, I was able to go back three years in my files and find the original of the artwork and the stencil and re-stencil the area that I needed to put on. 
Yeah. And because I'd got the original artwork, and it's not clogging up my computer, it's sitting on a, a server somewhere, right? So, but it's nice to be able to just go, hang on a minute, let me just find it. I can search for your name. Oh, there's your artwork. Oh, there's the stencil that we made. And because of the way I work, uh, because I sized the document, when I opened the document up, it remembered that I'd reduced it to 80%. As well. Ah, oh, that's but, awesome. You know, do you know what I mean? And, and so it's because the print dialogue remembers it because it's, it's part of the file that yeah. you're putting it in. So it, it just, for me personally, once it's set up, it just takes a shitload of stress away from you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I can imagine. So the, the first thing, and you know, if you've been doing this for a while, if you're already tattooing, then you know, some of this stuff you're going to go, well, I already do that, but I might be showing you a couple of things that you might not know about it. So, for instance, I know because I email Chris all the time, I know Chris has already got a Gmail address, right? But uh, I'm going to tell you why Gmail should be your, your preferred email uh, way of doing things, right? So Gmail is Google Mail, so it's mail provided by Google. The first thing about it is it's absolutely free, right? Um, which is awesome. The other thing is that the space is almost infinite. They, you will never run out of space on there. So the great thing about Gmail is the first thing you can do is don't ever delete your email ever again. Don't delete any more emails. Archive them. So in your mail program, you will have the option to delete or archive. Never, ever, ever delete an email. Archive it because you don't need to delete it. If you if you archive it, you can you can go back in five years time and find an email from a client. Oh, that's interesting. If you so archive, don't delete. You never need to delete another email as long as you live. Just leave them there. The the Gmail address that I've got, I think I've had it for five years. I've never deleted an email. Now, all of it's in there. Just and you can go back. It's all it's wedged, all in, wedged there. in there, right? <laughs> Now, so that's one of the big things. It's free and you, you never have to delete an email. But Gmail is one of the only free email services that I've found that allows you to use a secondary email address. So, for instance, my Gmail is this is ours to destroy at gmail.com, right? Yeah. Now, it's not particularly memorable, but I can remember it. But it's when I send you an email, it doesn't instantly scream Paul the Tattooist. Yeah. Right? So what what I want to do is I I want to send you an email from the same website, same address as my website. So my website is modernelectric.tattoo. So I want to send you an email from Paul at modernelectric.tattoo. Tattoo. Right. So this in, this involves setting up um, a, a, the accounts and import section in Gmail. So you go into Gmail... I've got it here. You'll have to excuse me because I'm, I'm looking at it on the screen to reference it, but I'm going to record the screen and I'll, I'm going to put this up as I'm doing it. Obviously, I'm going to have to block off some stuff that's a bit sensitive, like people who've emailed me and stuff. But, you, know, and, you know, and all that. GDPR. And GDPR and all that, you know. It's it's mostly adverts for Viagra, you know. <laughs> and kiss you. Th- I've been getting loads of mad fucking spam mails. Like, yeah. oh, why? Like- well, that's the other good thing about Gmail is if, if, you, if you've got it on the client side, which means you've got it on your computer and you're not doing it through a browser if you train the junk mail filter right you'll get um it will get really good at binning all that stuff off so what you do is you go into you go into gmail in the top right hand corner there's a little cog icon uh you click on that that's your settings and the fourth option across says accounts and imports if you look down there's an option that says send mail as right and so then you add a new email address there. And then it'll ask you a bunch of questions. So it'll ask you your email ad- address, so paul at modernelectric.tattoo, and your password, which I'm not going to tell you. And then, <laughs> and then you put that in. <laughs> and now, if you've got somebody that does your uh, website for you, then you need to ask them a couple of things like this. Gmail does a pretty good job of, of uh, guessing the port and the connection type, which is TLS or SSL. You don't need to worry about that. It's just secure connection types. And it'll, it'll generally, yeah. it'll generally Gmail guesses. If you have any problems, if you do your own website, you'll be able to check on your, you go to your, you know, your hosting company and look for their, their um, email settings, which is SMTP settings, right? Um, if you've got somebody that does it for you, like a web monkey, you ask your web monkey, what are the, what's my email settings and what is my, you know, secure connection port? You put all that stuff in, click it, and then you make, you can then make that the default. So if you email me, 
you know, this is ours to destroy at gmail.com. Mine is set up that every email you get back from me is from Paul at modernelectric.tattoo. Every email wow. I send is Paul at modernelectric.tattoo. Question for you, right? So could you just buy, like, a domain name, right? And, you know, if you like, you buy a domain name, like, www.chrisharrisontattoo or crharrisontattoo or harrisontattoo.com, for example, yeah. right? Could you then just, instead of having a website, could you just then have that, like, you know, info at chrisharrisontattoo.com and have that all set up for you without having the website and everything. Yeah, you can... Um, if you did it through a registration company, so if you went to somebody like 123 Reg, who are a good a good registration company, they give you an option to set up just email. So you can have just email, no website. Um, I would never advise that you do that because uh, I, I personally think that, uh, you know, uh, websites are making a comeback. Now, websites have, have gone... They've gone down in popularity through the mobile phone era, right? But with the yeah. rise of the tablet computer, which means that a lot of you know a lot of people surf the web on their phone, right? So websites looked awful on phones to start with because they're the wrong way round. Yeah, they have to be like optimized yeah. and everything, don't they? So now there's if you you know if you want to get a website, I would suggest um, getting some web hosting, installing a thing called WordPress. Uh, which is a content management system. It's a really good content management system, and then you can in, you can buy a theme to install on it. And all you've got to do is make sure that the theme that you buy, you've got to like the theme, obviously, but you're looking for what we call a responsive theme. If you want to know what a responsive theme is, visit my website on two devices. Visit modernelectric.tattoo on your web browser and then visit Modern Electric Tattoo on, say, your iPad. That's a good plug, hold good plug your for I- your website there, isn't it? <laughs> well, well if, you hold the, if you hold the iPad like this, you'll get one version of the website. Mm. You'll get one layout. If you do that with the website, you'll get a different version. It, re- it removes pictures to allow for the change in space. And then if, so it's more mobile friendly. Yeah, then, it's it? all mobile friendly. Now I haven't programmed any of that. I bought a theme that was built to do that. Somebody else had programmed it. It cost me forty ah. quid, and all I did was put my logo in and all my pictures and all of that sort of stuff because that's beyond the scope of my abilities. I'm not a I'm not a web developer, right? I you know I can yeah. design websites and build them to a certain extent. So what you do is you just buy it. And the great thing about that is, honestly, this might all seem like really difficult. If you can if you can sell an item on eBay, making a website with WordPress is about that hard. Right, it, it genuinely isn't difficult. It's just going to take you a minute to get your shit together. Yeah. But because people are starting to surf again on their tablets, they're starting to expect a little bit more than just the text that they get on their phone. They want a bit of a better thing. So if you was going to get yeah. an email address, you might as well have a website. It's not going to cost you that much more money. You know what I mean? Just like you might as well have yeah. one and either build it yourself or do what a lot of us do a lot of the time is the next person that you tattoo that goes, oh, well, you know, I'm, I build websites for a living. You're like, really? Would you like this tattoo for free? <laughs> Just get them to build your website for you. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though, right, from experience, if you do that, check out their work first because you're gonna end up with a fucked yeah. website. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 let them. Yeah, like, like or don't finish don't finish the tattoo till they finish the website to your uh, yeah. your, your satisfaction. You know, and uh, completely so off that's topic, the, right? That's your first off step. To- I got- go on, then. before we go on the next step, right? Off topic completely. I don't know if you've noticed. I've made a bit of effort. I've sorted out the room. It looks completely different now. <laughs> Rather than having a sheet behind me because I had complaints that it wasn't ironed enough, I've made it look <laughs> half decent. Like so. Now that's done. Let's go to the second point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, I've got something completely off topic, right? So people have been contacting you to tell you things like you haven't ironed your sheet and all this sort of stuff. Nobody's contacted me. Why aren't you contacting Paul? Everybody's everybody's sending everybody's sending Chris messages. Instead of sending Chris messages, why don't you just comment down below and me and Chris can both read them and laugh at your comments together? Yeah. yeah and we might even comment back and take the piss out of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bant- because Bant- because the internet and all that, you know. Um, <laughs> and in all fairness, right? Messaging me is super appreciated, but if you comment on our posts and our videos, it helps with the algorithm, doesn't it? 
Oh, does it? I don't know. Yeah, just comment on the videos. It helps. It helps. Yeah, absolutely. It helps with the Googly Al um, the, the YouTube Al I only got a section of that. Oh, uh, is it? We got a really bad connection tonight with the phone. We I got don't terrible know why. connection. The Wi-Fi so in Wales like isn't working. This is this is gonna be like the um, this is gonna be like the Eurovision Song Contest 1979 yeah. edition where we got all kinds of delays going on everywhere. Oh, but I got some yeah. of that. I, the, I guess the gist of what Chris has just said was uh, it really helps the channel, and he's absolutely right. It, uh, believe it or not, commenting, liking, and subscribing, as daft as it sounds, um, it, you know there is a really good reason for it. I don't want to bore you with going into it, but it really does help you help us bring you better content, right? So you know, an active channel with lots of people talking you know we can talk people into giving us some stuff to review for you and some people to come onto the channel and talk to you about stuff it's just hey dude it's yeah. that's the way we work like at some point hang on a minute at some point i will do a, i will do a thing on marketing i'll probably end up doing doing a whole section on marketing um and the the thing that we're basically getting at is we live in an attention economy and it's all about eyeballs and numbers uh, we don't personally believe in it we're just like we're just doing this because we enjoy doing it we're passionate about we don't even monetize either we never we? monetize you don't like, genuinely zero fucks given about all that stuff we're doing this because we have a great laugh doing it we we, we have these conversations if we're not filming <laughs> like before before yeah. we come on filming this we've been tw we've been chatting <laughs> 20 minutes about stuff anyway. We yeah. should have hit record, really. My fucking, my, uh, my missus said the other day, she was like, how long have you been talking to Paul for? And this is when I'm in the house doing the dishes. And she's like, you've been on the phone for fucking three hours. It's why my phone bill was 150 quid this month. Again. <laughs> It's insane. I was, you want to get a fucking different mobile phone Honestly, company, man. I'm going to have to get off pay as you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or does the phone company that you're with think that fucking Wales is like a different country and they charge you international call charges? Yeah, whenever you phone me, it comes up as an international call. <laughs> 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 right, so moving swiftly along now that I've offended everybody in Wales again. Um, the Wait. next step in the boring episode and getting yourself organised is another thing that I'm hoping that you've started doing and uh, I can show you a couple of good hacks and tips for this. And this is to use a digital calendar like iCal if you're on a Mac or Google Calendar because it comes with Gmail so you can use it. It's part of the Google suite of programs. You can use that if you're on Android or a PC or something like that. Um, I use iCal, but iCal also works with Google Mail so, or Google Calendar because Lucas, who works in my shop, is an avid uh, PC fan. He, he, he likes using PCs and it, it, it integrates seamlessly. So it also means that if you've got multiple people that you need to share calendars with and manage, you know, like if you've got a shop and you've got five artists and you need to make sure, like, like at the moment, if your shop has gone from six booths down to three and has created what can only be described as a clusterfuck in uh, organising the diary, yeah. um, then, then you know, you want to manage it with that. Now, you, like, you can use a paper diary, but realistically, what on earth are you doing if you're using a paper diary in 2020? I mean, come on, there's just no need. Carbon footprint. Carbon footprint, man. Let's just not do it. So digital, and the other great thing is about digital diaries is I share mine with my assistant. Now, my assistant is my wife. She's my PA. She basically runs my life. Your, your boss, She's then. basically my boss, yeah, to be honest <laughs> with you. I prefer to call her my PA because it gives me the illusion that I'm in charge, you know? <laughs> uh, but I'm not. But it means that Karen can book stuff in, in my diary. She can book reminders of stuff that I've got to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then... And, and and I can look at it and, and go, listen, I need to give the client a call. And in that diary entry, I can see their email address, their telephone number, what the, the basic brief is. She'll just put, like, the first paragraph of, the, of like, what I'm doing so that when I talk to them, I go, it's about okay. this, let's take, a, let's take a chat. So set yourself up, iCal, and then... Uh, can I ask you a question there? Yes, mate. Um, because obviously this question is going to be on every single person's mind because we know all know tattooists don't like spending money. Yeah. Are those free programs, or do you have to pay like no, a subscription or anything? No, they're both free. iCal comes free on your Mac, and uh, Google Calendar comes free with your Gmail account. Happy days. Yeah, so you ain't gonna pay a you ain't gonna pay a penny. Free. Uh, and they they will stay. The other the other great thing about that is that you can do things like 
um, if you get to the end of your year and you want to add up all your stuff, you can kind of just print out the. You can print them out monthly, and you can look through all your all your tallies if you want to do if you do your accounts that way, and you can just tally up all your tallies yeah. and see how much money you earn every month and things like that. You know, it's all there, and it doesn't delete it. Stays on it there forever. If 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 you're one of the legitimate ones, <laughs> well, yeah, well, no, all that you do is you delete all the ones you don't want a tax man to know about. I guess I mean, <laughs> just, just delete them all. Because like, that's what that's one thing I've noticed, right? And uh, I, I'm sorry if I offend anyone here, right? But one thing I've noticed since, because uh, obviously we're filming this during the lockdown, this could go out after the lockdown. But one thing I've noticed in this lockdown is so many tattooists, right, that are kind of normally when you see them, they're like fucking rolling in money. They, you know, they live this lavish lifestyle. They look like they've got a fucking shitload of money. They're all fucked. They're all skint. They can't. They're not getting any grants or any help or anything like that. And I'm just thinking, like, I think I might be on my own in the room for a moment now. Yeah. I'm, no, oh no, no, no you're back. Me. Hello. I, just, I, I, was, yeah. I was just on my Signal own for a minute. Again. <laughs> no, what, what, what I was saying was like, um, I think, like, fucking corner. Right, we'll cut that out. I've forgotten. I've fucking lost track. Don't Basically, worry about what's it. going on about like. Oh, the lavish oh, yeah, lifestyles. Taxes, taxes. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like people with lavish lifestyles, you know. You see them before lockdown, they got fucking shitloads of money, and then during lockdown, they're all fucked, <laughs> because guess what, they don't put as much money through the books as they make out, like, it's either that or this all lies. You know what, in, on, a seri- on a serious point, this is something that Lala Hardy said to me in an interview years ago, he said that, you know, one of the best advice, pieces of advice you could give to a young tattooist is save for the rainy days, so... My my thing that I would do, I would take that a step further, and I would go save for a global um, pandemic. You know, I would, <laughs> yeah, I would say for a global pandemic. Yeah, no, what I what I would say is I would, you know, plan, plan, you know, hope for the best, yeah. but plan for the worst, right? So so you know, do it like that. So you know, if you are starting out in tattooing, get yourself a little nest egg of money because you know when you ain't working, you ain't earning. Like a few years ago, I I fucking was trying to carry a motorbike engine across the fucking garage in my house. Uh, or in my garage, um, and uh, I ended up giving myself a hernia, which meant I couldn't work for six weeks, right? So I had six weeks with, with no earnings whatsoever, and I had to pay three and a half grand to yeah. get sorted out, you know what I mean? So, you know, hope for the best, plan for the worst. And with that, it's 23 minutes, so I'm just going to hit this button. Beep! I'm still working on that. I have to get that test card sorted yeah, out. That, no, that will, I will. I will sort that out. But I think that this so, is like a, definitely a topic that we can come back to another time as well. The whole kind of like, do you want to have like this rock and roll fucking kind of appearance, or do you literally want to just be like sensible, like a lot of tattoo artists, a tattoo artists out there, save your money and just fucking be comfortable, like do me? Uh, honestly, I think if I'm honest with you, I think the the rock and roll tattoo appearance is all just done for Instagram. When I look at Instagram, I think a lot of that is just it's that's just photographs. It's just people taking photographs. I don't really take a lot of that seriously. But if you if those tattooists are then influencing younger tattooists coming along, thinking that that's how, how lives are actually lived, then that could be quite dangerous. This is at the end of the day, this is a job. It's a craft. It is a passion, and we love it. But it is still a job, and you are self-employed. And if you're not earning or if you're not working, you're not earning, there's no pension in this job and there's no sick pay and you do have to allow for that when you're working. I'm fortunate, I've been self-employed since I left school basically. Yeah. So my, I've been self-employed all my life. I had a very brief period where I was waged, but for the for the vast majority of this, I've, I've been self-employed. self-employed. So this is very normal to me, but you must make sure that you plan for the future. Let's move on to the third part of, of this. Now, this, this for me, is um, I, I think this is one of the the, the more important parts of uh, your, your carbon footprint, and also because, like Chris said, we are filming this in the lockdown, and the um, and and things are going to change. I think quite a bit, certainly in the short term for tat- the tattoo industry, possibly in the long term for the tattoo industry. So, for a while now, probably for. It might be as much as five or six years now. I've used I've, I've used a digital consent form. Uh, you might think, well, why do I need to use a digital consent form? Um, well, the the big benefit of that is obviously the first thing is you're not printing out a shitload of A4 paper all the time and and you know making people fill out paper forms and you don't you're not storing paper forms anywhere. Um, you can you're storing digital forms on a hard drive somewhere or on in the cloud these days, right? 
I use a company or a website called Jotform yeah. for making my digital forms. So, and again, I'm, this will be on screen while I'm doing this. So, my my consent form that you're given. So, obviously, at the moment, we we've had to add a few things to the form that weren't on it on the 24th of May when we all got shut down, or, or certainly in England. So, are they fully customizable? Fully customizable. You make it exactly how you want it, right? And is it free? It's absolutely free up to a certain amount of forms per month. Right. And then after that, it's a, it's a very, very reasonable thing. I personally have never gone over the amount of forms that I need per month. It doesn't do it. Be, because each... You've got to remember, you, if you've got a shop, you, you can have a job form account for each artist yeah. in the shop. You don't have to have one account. Each artist can have a job form account and, and it's, you know, you just send their forms out and it's you can customise it exactly how you want it. Again, it's a form builder, so you build it on online in front of yourself. You can drag and drop stuff. You can do like radio check buttons. You can do little bits that you fill in for any other details. So it's like, you know, so we've had to add, have you had COVID-19? Have you been, you know, have you or any symptoms in the last two weeks? Have you been exposed to anybody with COVID nineteen in the last two weeks? So quick, and, quick one. Sorry to interrupt, on, you, interrupt you there. But, it's all right, mate. So I have recently started before lockdown started using um, digital consent forms, which is a similar thing to what you've got there. Yeah, it does sound quite, um, quite. It does. They do sound quite the same. Um, the one I've been using is called Stab Pad, and I was put on to it by um, our former body piercer who's got his own place now, um, Ricky. Um, it's completely free. It's like some open source kind of thing, right? Where you 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 get it, uh, and you you can customize it yourself uh, and everything. Yeah. But you there's no limit. Like it's not like oh once you've had like thirty fucking consent forms you've got to start paying. It's you yeah. set up yours and it's free. And then like once a customer fills a consent form, it goes one copy goes to your email address and the other copy goes to the client's email address as well. Right. So that that sounds that sounds really good. However, um, because it goes, I mean, it's fine if it goes to your email because you, then you'd, you'd have to search through your email to, you know, to find it, mm. right? The thing I like about Jotform and possibly why, you know, if you send more than a certain amount, you'd have to pay for it. I think, if, you know, if something's good, it's worth paying for. The next thing I want to be telling you about is a paid thing. Um, and I would pay for Jotform, to be honest with you. And the reason I pay for Jotform is the, cost, the customizable options allow me to have things like a digital signature and a, the, a, the client can actually draw I can put a graphic of a body on, on the form and they can actually draw on the body how big and where they want their tattoo can you take so, and things so, so the, the stab had one right you can do the digital signature um, and you can also take photographs of their identification as well so can you do that with the one you've got uh, I, I guess they could they could probably scan I haven't looked at their ID because we, we tend to take the ID when they come into the shop you know what I mean so um, and the other thing is that I think, I mean, it's something that you might want to take into consideration. Like, obviously, a lot of my clients are, are so so clearly over 18 that it's there's just no need to, to do it. You yeah. know? <laughs> it's like you're clearly over 18. If you have a lot of ta a clients that are marginal, um, then... I will look into it and see if uh, if that's possible. But I think you could you could they could probably upload their ID into the form. You could give them a, yeah you could you could do you could do image upload yeah. But this one yeah so, you could just do it as an image upload. So the stab pad one right it opens up on your iPad um, and on the bottom it's just a section and you just press the button and you just hold your, your yeah you hold your, your your ID in front of the camera takes a photo takes a photograph yeah saves it onto the form and then happy days yeah so. Um, I think you can. I can actually. I hadn't thought about putting that in my form. I might have to add that because that's that's a pretty that's a pretty good idea. Yeah. You could. You, I think you could probably do it as image upload, and then I'd have to look into whether it um, jot form can access the camera. Because if it can access the camera, then you could probably um, you could you just hold it up to the screen like yeah. that. Or, or you know, to your camera. I'm sure it would. It, you would be able to do it one way or another. But yeah, because you know. See, this is the mad thing now, especially with COVID nineteen. Like, so for my one, it's going to be a case of, like, I'll either have to get a fucking iPad separately for clients to use, so they're not using my iPad. Yeah. And then that's extra cost. Or is that thing of like you text them the link, um, and they do it all on their phone or something like. That. Yeah, I mean, I, I. I do all of it before I do all of this at the point of booking. Well, the consent forms. You know, when they 
Yeah, I do all the consent forms at the point where they book. But what in. happens if uh, between the point of booking and the appointment something happens? Like we ask them to fill in another form. It's just another PDF. It's no more paper. We just fill in another form. Because uh, no problem. Just fill in the form again. Yeah, because you know because. If you know, and, and because I I prefer that, if I'm honest, uh, uh, to do it, I, th I, I think I, I'd have to check with Karen because obviously Karen does most of this for me, right? I think what Karen does is two months before their appointment, she contacts the client to confirm the date and make sure everything's okay. Yeah. That's when she does all the kind of travel arrangements because I've clients flying in and traveling in and stuff, and they they need to know you know trains and the nearest train station, nearest you know airports and all that sort of stuff. And so we, we make she does all that, and I think she does the form at that point two months before. Now um, this is, and this then we is, just make it clear, like if anything changes, then you know. See, th this is interesting now because again, this is, can be definitely be for a different topic altogether. Because when it comes to like the whole licensing and registration systems, because ours is being changed in Wales. Yeah. When, so I went on like a I went on the course which everyone's gonna have to do in Wales, and we we kind of like done a pre test to see what it was like and everything, and give feedback. And one of the things that they said is, when it comes to consent forms, right, you can't just send somebody a consent form and get them to fill it in. You have to be there when they fill the consent form in because you have to be able to make sure that they understand everything that's on there so if you've sent somebody a consent form is online like too much before your appointment then what you you haven't done is you haven't done your due diligence to make sure that they understand every aspect of that because let's just say for example what if you and, and they made a wicked point about this is like what if your client's dyslexic yeah good point yeah and they read in it oh, yeah, and I they mean, don't yeah. understand what if because like we all do like i've tattooed people who have um, who suffer from mental health problems and they have to come in yeah. with a carer yeah if they've not, if they filled the consent form two months prior, then yeah. how have you done everything you can to make sure that they understand that what they're getting is a permanent procedure? And so there's there's all these things that like we're gonna have to do once those new rules come into place. Um, yeah, for yeah. Tattooing. So I would say personally, like as it, it's 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 good being proactive and kind of yeah do like a pre-assessment form because you could turn around and say and and and, and this is something like we've actually discussed this is a pre-assessment form would be awesome because you can be like okay so if my client wants to get a tattoo right and they put on the pre-assessment form like a checklist is like do you have any diseases or any illnesses that could affect you getting tattooed so for example and and this is what they explained to us if because this is like the group the thing the thing you shouldn't talk about is like if your client has AIDS yeah or HIV yeah. was it HIV yes HIV you know whatever one of those HIV HIV, yeah. HIV. Right? HIV. everyone says you can't refuse to tattoo somebody with HIV because it's discrimination and everything. But like we yeah. turned on to them and said, well, how come I can refuse to tattoo somebody who's diabetic? Yeah. Um, so what they said was like, it's not a case of refusing them. It's you, what you need to do is you need to make sure, right? And this is for the person's health and for their safety because yeah. they've got an autoimmune disease, right? You've got to basically in this pre-checklist, if they say I'm got HIV or I'm diabetic or I'm this and I'm that you can turn around them and say yeah I need you to provide me a letter from your doctor before your appointment that says that you if you HIV um that you're up completely up to date with all your meds and and everything and you are yeah, okay yeah. because what could happen is if you're not okay because obviously we treat everybody like they've got AIDS you know you've got to it's, it's like a precaution. It's a sad truth. It's just the way it is. We treat um, what Chris is talking about is we treat all blood as infected. Yeah, it, I mean, that's that's it, that's what we have to do. It's, that's aseptic technique. Exactly. It just, that just is what it is. Sounds terrible. It's actually not. It's just how we. It's, it's, being, it's how we learn yeah. to keep people safe. We, we, yeah. it's, it's our way of keeping you safe. It's like you're going to treat everybody like they got COVID nineteen when we go back to work. Like, do you know what I mean? But the way I explained it to Sam in the shop, I went. Just imagine. It's uh, the all blood is like the blood in 28 days later. <laughs> if you get it on you, you will immediately get the rage virus. It works really good with your apprentices. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> that's a good idea, actually. Um, so basically, that's basically yeah, how it so works. If you if your immune system is compromised and you're not completely up to date with all your meds, when you get tattooed, you could have complications afterwards, which could lead on to more infections and things like that so a pre-checklist yeah. is bang on like i think a pre-checklist like 
if you've got HIV, just let us know that you and show us that you're completely up to date yeah. for your safety. If you're diabetic, make sure you're completely up to date. Because like, I had one client, he was changing his uh, he was changing his meds when he was diabetic. I think he went on to these new things. That's like a, like a disc that you stick on your arm and it automatically yeah. puts you through with an app and everything. Yeah. His fucking insulin levels were all over the shop, and I was like, I can't shop, tattoo man. you, man, because your tattoos are not healing at all. Like, so it's things like that. It's like you, so I guess, so we're getting a bit off the topic, right? So um, how could we use jot form? So this would be my suggestion is um, because this works really well for me. So based on what Chris is saying, my answer would be I would I could use this form as my pre-check, get all of my get all of like the, the questions done. And then if if you want to do a an up to date on the spot, make sure the clients understand it in your presence then this is like a pre-check to make sure that, okay, we haven't got anything we need to talk further yeah. about. I could, And then when they arrive at the studio, if you feel like Chris and you think that, okay, maybe I, you know, there's a due diligence issue and I want to ask further questions, which, you know, is, is not, we're not required to do that in the UK at the moment, but we may, may very well need to. And I think it's just good practice if I'm absolutely honest with you. So what you would do then, you would have, you, you would then have to have, um, you, you you can't really do it on your own iPad because if you pass that to the client and they pass it back to you, it's a bit sketchy. Unless it? they wear gloves. Um, so you, this is the things. Unless you could give them gloves, but you want to. What you want to do is you want to sit down with them and go through the form with them before you start tattooing and make sure they understand it and then and then confirm that everything's okay yeah. and have a secondary signature at the bottom of the form that yeah. says my artist. My artist as gone through the form with me and I fully understand the implications of the tattoo, blah, 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 and they sign again there and then. You know what I mean? So you could use it like a pre-check, yeah, but you, you just You update, definitely need like you? a pre-check list. I think definitely going forward, like a pre-check um, and then the consent form is the one you do on the day because, you know... But the pre-check and the consent form are the same set of stuff. So all you would do is you're going back through the same information so that you could go through the pre-check and then on the day confirm that all that stuff there, A, they understand what it yeah. is, and B, there's no changes, and they're happy to proceed. They understand that it's a permanent procedure yeah. and that they're physically and mentally well enough to, to have the tattoo. No, nothing has changed on the form that they've mm -hmm. filled in, and they sign again. Because you just have another disclaimer at the bottom of the form, yeah. which is would be my answer to that and they're signing to say i i filled this form in two months ago and we've gone through it there are no changes and i understand everything on the form it's yeah. been explained to me by the artist prior to the tattoo yeah it's just it's the things like you again this is that whole thing of like tattooists and again because we're in lockdown right now and i'm seeing online all these artists going now oh, we're the safest in the industry and it's like a lot of people don't even consider that they don't even consider right that you're tattooing with somebody that's got a, a health condition that could affect them yeah. and could affect their healing you're not asking them not i'm not saying you i'm saying they are not asking the questions they are not kind yeah, yeah, of yeah. turning around and going oh do you know what we're blah 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 blah, blah. and it, it goes down to things like uh, you, the use of lidocaine, like you know, yeah, are yeah, you yeah. asking your clients if they know if they've got a fucking allergy to lidocaine? Because if they if they have got an allergy and you don't know and they don't know and you put it on them, they could fucking die. Do you uh, also do you know how much lidocaine you can put on the skin before it's an overdose? Yeah, well, definitely not six. How much topical and <laughs> how much topical anesthesia can you use before you OD yeah, the client? Definitely not six bottles of Bactine on a back piece. <laughs> no five. <laughs> <laughs> that's insane like no so no I mean but in all seriousness that these are these are many of the things that I think we're gonna we're gonna have to change in what oh, we do yeah. and this is you know this is my existing system and through conversation like this and that's why we that's why we're doing this stuff we're having this conversation so you can hear Chris's opinion my opinion we're both professional artists and maybe between the two of us we'll give you a better understanding if you're Maybe you're an artist on your own in a in a private studio, and you, you're not really yeah. sure. Well, you know, well, ho hopefully this will help you. I really genuinely do hope because it's a bit of it can be a bit of a minefield, you yeah. know. As you as we try and step up our game, you know, things like doing due diligence for your clients and, and making sure that everything's or, okay. Or, or you know knowing, I mean? right? Knowing that you're not allowed to use fucking back team 
we are not allowed to yeah. use vaccine. Same as right, tattoo supply companies. Vaccine is vaccine is a numbing. If you've it never seen lidocaine. vaccine, it's it contains lidocaine. In this country, anything that contains lidocaine at more than 0. 0.05, which is basically bongella, you know the stuff you put on little kids' gums. Um, anything more than that, we're not allowed to use it. Although we we all do. Yeah, and supply companies are not allowed to sell it because you have to be a pharmacy. Mm-hmm. That's why the supply company that we're sponsored by had to stop selling um, uh, Hassle Helper because Hassle Helper yeah. it's got ba- uh, it's got five percent. Yeah. It's five percent. Li- it was five percent lidocaine. Now it's the thing is the, the thing that's worth mentioning. This is the law in the UK and Wales. This is not the law in America because Bactine is sold as uh, an, an over-the-counter medication. You can pick it up. It's a bug spray. Question right? for and you, it's 2.5% right? lidocaine. A question for you. I yeah. remember, right, I um, I swear down, right, I'm sure they used to sell Bactine, right, in the fucking UK in, like, the late 80s, early 90s. Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know, man. But, it, I mean, the, the, the rules change all the time. I know that here, if you want anything, anything that's 2.5% lidocaine, you've got to go to a pharmacist, yeah. and it's like, it's that topical cream stuff, like Amatop and um, em- Emla yeah, or something like that. Yeah, fucking that um, as well. Right. Um, you have to get that from a pharmacist who's supposed to ask you a bunch of questions, um, and it's you know it's a numbing cream for tattoos. Uh, it's not actually very effective in my opinion, and it fucks the skin up. It makes it it's like dead fish skin to tattoo. It. It's really weird. It's designed for injections. Yeah, it is designed for injections. It's a bit weird, but I know uh, that you can buy. I can go to Walgreens in the US and buy six bottles of Bactine. Yeah. You know, and it's not thirty-five quid a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's about four, but bu- it's about four bucks. So. Um, it's the laws are different is what is the point I'm making so check your country because it might be absolutely okay for you to use it in yeah. your country it's not here even though it does get used yeah it's you not legal it just, it just does get it's used it's not legal it's not it's not it's, it's, not, it's legal. not fucking clever <laughs> and 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 the thing is technically if you use it and, you, and your client has a bad reaction um, you you could find yourself in a in a sketchy position. Do you remember that stuff, Vasicaine? Fuck yeah! It's just like giving people fucking chemical burns when you but put then, it on them as a numbing this cream. This is the thing. This, fucking this, ridiculous this, stuff. This again goes down to not understanding right how much you're allowed to put on. This is why we shouldn't be using it because we don't know how much you meant to fucking put on the skin. It's not our gig. It's not our gig. You know, we're tattooists, man. I'm not a fucking anaesthetist. I'm a fucking tattooist, like, do you? I don't... Yeah, n- none of us are. We don't fucking know. You know what I mean? Like, you can you maybe give them a bit of Bongella and see if that helps. <laughs> do you know what, right? I had, I had some numbing cream um, sent with a tattoo machine that I bought, right? And when I went, I had a look on the back of it. It was, like, fucking pile cream. <laughs> We're fucking lady yeah. in it. So they sell in pile cream as a fucking numbing agent for tattoos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. There was a company that tried to set up in this country selling a numbing cream that were very, and they they didn't, you know, they just didn't even bother checking or testing. They just got hold of it, put it in another bottle, and then and then got pulled up about it, going, you know, you can't sell this. Right? And they hadn't. This is the company hadn't even checked. But it does happen. But when it comes to making the digital form, check. You know, you decide what you think. I mean, I I think I'm happy for somebody to fill a form in a couple of months before the appointment. And then, and then confirm it with me on the day. I can sit there with the with the iPad, or I'll come up with a system where they can they can digitally sign it wearing a glove, or I'll barrier it and then change the barrier when, before I start tattooing or something. One more question um, for you. One more question for you on this yes, topic, mate. right? Do you get them to fill the consent form in every session? Yes, right. good man. Every every single session <laughs> that you do. Regardless, if, if nothing has changed, you're going to need another signature and another consent. Now, up till up till recent times, I got um, I just got verbal consent, but these days I get uh, written consent every every session. Oh yeah, you need- because verbal consent, legally verbal consent is enough. If you've you know, if you've tattooed somebody, verbal consent is taken as a given. But I think that um, because we do have to start thinking about these things a little bit more, then we got to, you know, I think getting a signature shows that the client has been shown the form yeah. again each time. And I and so I just do a new form. Yeah, that's perfect. Just, that, it's, yeah. it's just easier than having 20 yeah, signatures. Yeah, I know a lot of people that they will only do the one form per client. And my, I used to. I used to, I used to ask them at the beginning of, say I do session one, 
and they fill in a form and then at the beginning of session two I would always go as you met anything in your medical yeah. uh, history changed I'd show them the form that they had are you happy to proceed yeah. that's the key Is thing it, are you happy for me to proceed do you have verbal consent you know and we've got to we've got to do a quick stop and start haven't we because I'm at 24 oh, yeah. minutes and 30 seconds Right, I'm back in the room. Uh, consent forms, yeah, definitely getting filled in every time a, cost, a customer a customer comes in to get out. The digital consent form, I think, is a good idea. Carbon footprint, and because you can, you know, you keep it for as long as you're legally required to in your country. Um, I think here now, uh, when I when I first set up the studio ten years ago, I was uh, data protection required me definitely to destroy all medical records for clients after twelve months. That has changed now. We are required to keep them for a little bit longer. Uh, I think it's three years. I'm now. not sure it's either. Um, I'd have to. Do, I'd have to double check. I need to that double check not, this because you know, I thought it was yeah. five. I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, things change. But I, I definitely know. Ten years ago, when I set up, I was data protection said, you know, like destroy it. But check how long because you got to remember these are people's medical yeah. records that we're taking, and they are, um, they they are um, protected under data protection. Um, actually, you uh, you can't. Certainly in this country, uh, if your health authority come and visit you, you're not supposed to show them, and request health forms. You're not supposed to show them to them unless they have a court order. Is that 100%? Because we have to they, check into that. Yep, 100%. They have to have a court order to to view somebody else's medical records or permission from that. Yeah, person. I can see the police would be the ones. I think if it gets to the point where. Yeah. They need to be seen. That's where it gets to yeah. the point where it's actually a police yeah. matter, and the police would ask for it then. So, the, but the police would also have to have a court um, door, yeah. legal permission to do that. They can't just walk in and, and ask for it. So, you know, don't get shown people. Things. Unless you fucking also, American when it police comes, officer, and you can do whatever the fuck you want, like <laughs> <Bats>. <laughs> fuck you want. Apparently, um, the other thing while while I think about this, if you're doing regular forms, because you don't have to do this if you don't. I, I recommend it when it comes to taking ID. Right, uh, so a lot of places they'll take ID and they go right. I'm going to scan the ID until we've got a copy of it, and they'll put it in a scanner and do it. If you take somebody's ID off them to scan it, that ID has to stay in their line of sight all the time it's in your possession. You can't have a scanner in another room. You can't go out the back and scan it. You can't take the ID out of the client's line of sight. Hmm. It's against the law. That It has to remain within their view all the That's time you're scanning it. Yeah, you can't do it. It's against the law. So don't have your scanner out the back of the room, you know, which is, again, why um, it's good to get a digital version of that 100%. because they can do it for themselves and they've supplied it. And that's where, like, uh, the stab part is good because it just takes a photograph of it and happy day spobs your fucking teapot, like... I'm going to look into this stab pad because it sounds pretty good, man. And it sounds, obviously, because it's called stab pad, it's probably aimed at the tattoo industry. Jot form isn't. It's, a, it's a, you know, for making all kinds of forms. So maybe stab pad is a better option. Go and take a look at both of them. They're, they're both free to start with, so you can assess both of them. Check out which one you like the best and let us know in the comments. If you prefer stab pad, let us know. If you prefer jot form, let us know. You know, me and Chris will have a competition. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, I'll win because okay, that so part's free. <laughs> yeah, you will. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, I, it sounds good to me. I'm going to go take a look at it. It's worth a look. So the this is this is number four on my list. So and this follows on from Jot Form, and this is one that I hope because this is where I think Jot Form is going to win over Stop Stab Pad because of its integrations, go ahead. right? So. When you're taking your client's details, you're going to ask them for an email address to um, to contact them. When you take their email address, if you get them permission underneath where they uh, underneath where they fill in their email address, you go, "Is it okay if I send you a, a, a newsletter? If I email you a newsletter, and you give them a tick box to check, yeah. right? Then j uh, Jot Form can automatically send that email address." to a thing, the next service that I'm talking about, which is a free email mailing list called MailChimp. And it will build your mailing list from your job ah, forms. I, I don't know if StabPad so does that because I don't have a mailing list. I'm not as fucking so, high-tech as you. Right, you. right, so let me tell you like why you need a mailing list, right? Um, 
even today in 2020, the number one marketing tool that you can use. It's the one that is shown again and again and again to be the number one way that people respond to any kind of marketing is direct email. Mm. So if you you should have a mailing list and you, if people are filling in digital forms and they, they can opt out, they can tell you, no, I don't want you to send it me. Um, and you have to give them, you have to allow them to do that because it's part of GDPR yeah. and all that sort of stuff. But when they sign up to it, it means that you can then send them a monthly newsletter. Like I send mine out where I tell people that, you know, I'm, I'm going to do during lockdown, I'm going to do this. Or um, it might be that, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll do a, a couple of pieces of artwork and I'll give them away yeah. for nothing. Or I'll, I'll have a competition. Like I'm, I'm going to have a competition in the near future for somebody to win a, a £500 guitar that I've been painting while I've been in lockdown. I've been keeping it a secret. But now you know. <laughs> but these are things that I do only for my mind. Yeah. List. So if you're not on my mailing list, you won't know about it. It's not announced on social media except when I let it slip on YouTube and things like that. But I generally don't. It's just for my mailing list. So, and but people react to that, and um, it's and your number one marketing tool. So Mailchimp is my next uh, port of call. So get yourself a Mailchimp account. Again, it's free up to a certain amount, and then you have to pay after that. Um, but if you're starting out, you're not going to you're not going to get over the, the free amount for for a little while because it takes a little while to yeah. get people's email addresses because you know nobody likes getting spam, no. do they? Right? But but like if you know if you're interested in what a tattoo artist is doing, you're likely to sign up to it, right? Um, I also do on mine. I like I announce when I've got you know a, a, a spare day here and there. I go actually, I'm I've got this date. You know, if anybody wants to come and get something, I've got these couple of bits yeah. of artwork, or I can do a custom piece, and I, that goes out to my mailing list. Uh, so Mailchimp is again, it's like Jot Form. It's free up to a certain amount. You pay after that. Um, but if you get past that, then you know it's good to have a mailing list. You know, uh, a lot of people think this is corporate stuff. It's not. It's just like se- it's like sending an email to one person. It's just that you get to send it to three thousand people with yeah. one click. And it allows you to make a like a nice pretty email with you know your logo on the top and You're you can add pictures then. and stories and links to videos. It looks so you know, I think it looks kind of pro and it's cool. But I, I do it, you know, it's like a i it, I guess it's a hangover from doing the band thing. We used to we used to do this shit all the time and I kind of thought, well it weren't really good with the band, so why not just carry on doing yeah. it with a tattooing, you know, and and but the, the thing you and I'm going off track a little bit here but the thing you have to remember is if you're getting somebody to give you their email address don't send them random shit send them stuff that's actually uh, gives them an incentive to stay on that list and it makes it worth it to them so you know I'll do you know like at Christmas time sometimes I'll clear out my you know you get to the end of the year don't you and you clear out all this stuff and I go I've got 500 stickers left or i got these yeah. 10 stickers i got these 15 badges first 15 people to email me I'm just going to put a load of shit in a jiffy bag and send yeah. it to you and, and, and stuff like that and again it's only for the mailing list right and I, I did that a few years ago I haven't done it the last couple of years because we have been super tidy in the shop <laughs> lately but occasionally I, I find a box and go fuck it I haven't seen them stickers for two years and there's like I don't know 50 of them and I'll just send them out to you know to the mailing list right so that's my next thing and that's the integration with uh, Jotform another thing that is part of the integration conversation is when what happens when the client fills in this form and hits send Right, so the great thing about Jotform is the way I've got mine set up, and you can you can set it up differently. What happens with mine is it's integrated with a product called Dropbox, which is a cloud storage service. Now this is paid. Uh, I think it's free up to two gig, but you know two gigs not going to work, right? Um, so uh, you will be paying for it. It's about ninety nine pounds a year to pay, to buy it for like a couple of terabytes, I think, at the moment. But what happens is, um, and I'm going to explain Dropbox, that uh, what happens is when they hit send, an, an email copy is sent to their email address, but at my end, a folder is created on my computer, right? And I know, this right, a folder is created on yeah. my computer with the client's name and a PDF of their form is put in that folder, filled in and signed. You're gonna have to do like so, um, a little tutorial on how to do this, because like that, that sounds pretty cool. So what this means at my end, when I'm sitting on my iPad or my laptop, yeah. and we'll get into iPads and laptops in the next episode, um, basically, I, you know, because you gotta remember like, you know, I've got, 
and I, you know, I don't want to brag or anything, but I've got like a nine month w- waiting list, pretty much average all the time. That's as short as it gets, right? And so it can be from when the client sort of uh, first does their email, we have that conversation. Um, it, that, that happened eight months ago, six yeah. months ago, right? And then they, they fill in the form. I might have forgotten, did he say left arm or right arm? Was it a sleeve or was it was it just an upper arm? Was it a forearm piece? So then just before I start talking to them, because, you know, I normally give them a call a couple of months before and go, is everything the same? You still want, you know, razor head or something like that? And um, I've got it all in front of me. So I've got the form in front of me and I just give them a quick tinkle or I'll drop them a WhatsApp or something like that. And um, and we just have a quick chat about it, make sure everything's yeah. the same. But it's just a folder on my computer. Oh, so you can just easy right? so access. I can just go like... into it. I can search my computer on my iPad. I can search by the client name that's in my iCal because I've got a digital calendar, and I can find it. And I can just go, oh, hang on a minute. Right, I'll give him a call. You know, make sure everything's okay. I mean, sometimes I want to ask a question because I don't know. Uh, what quantum mechanics is and how I'm the hell I'm going to do a tattoo all about quantum mechanics or something you know I mean, like the stuff comes up like that, that I go I don't even know what the fuck that yeah. is right you know and so I have to ask some questions right um, so I use a product for this called Dropbox right so Dropbox is uh, it's cross platform which means that it works on a Mac and a PC and what this does is that you create a folder on your computer, or it does it actually when you install the program, called Dropbox. Every single thing that you put in the Dropbox is saved into the cloud, which basically means it's saved onto a server somewhere yeah. else. This maintain, this means that what you've got in technical terms is an off-site backup. So if you drop your computer down an escalator in Munich Airport, like at least one person I know has done it once in his life, right? And it's completely and utterly fucked, yeah. right? Then you don't have to worry about losing the contents of the hard drive because... Yeah, or if you get fucking water damage. If you get water damage, right? <laughs> Mate, I had it an old Sony Vio years ago and I poured a cu- I knocked a cup of coffee over it straight into the keyboard, oh. right? And I actually watched the screen go and die. The only way to save it, and this is scary as fuck, right? The best way to do it, if you ever do this, right, is uh, you can't do it on a Mac, right? Uh, you, you need one, uh, needed to be a PC because you got to pull the battery, t- pull the battery out. You get the thing under the sink, you put the tap on, and you run, you run the fucking, you run cold water all over the keyboard. Stand it up, and you got fucking water dripping out like that. And then you, and then basically, I left it in my boiler cupboard where you know we call it an airing cupboard in the yeah. in the UK. We even still have airing cupboards. Yeah. I mean, we do. Don't you see where the boiler used to be? And um, and I put it in there and let it dry out for 48 hours, fired it up. And do you know what? It was still working three Wait, years do, later. Do, no, and I've run, I run water all the way through It's funny you should say that. My MacBook, right, my MacBook Pro was proper fucked. And, like, proper fucked it is, what it, you know, it is what it means. That's a technical proper term. Fucked, proper like. fucked means beyond repair. You <laughs> know? And uh, I took it in there and they were like, yeah, they, they, you go into Curry's and they were like, oh, this is fucked. Um, obviously, they never said that. And I, was, I had insurance, so I got a gripe with fucking Curry's. Never take out their insurance that they try and sell you because they sell it to you as insurance in the shop, right? But it's not actually insurance. It's a fucking K plan. And then it says it's covered for water damage, but in fact, it's fucking not. They try, oh, they try everything yeah. to get out of it. I, I, I kicked right off. But um, it took so long... This whole dispute took so long. In the end, I was. They were like, "Look, you need to come and get your MacBook because we can't keep it here." I'm like, "Well, I'm still disputing it." They'd had it for so yeah. long, right? It completely dried out. The only thing that's not working on it is the battery. If I get a new battery for it, it's fucking working. It's fine. So I have technically, I haven't lost all my clients' artwork, but I did because obviously yeah. it was fucked at the time. But the hard drive works. Everything works fine, other than the battery. It, yeah. So does it fire up? If I've got a power lead plugged into it, but I can't find the power lead, so power lead plugged into it, it'll do it. Yeah. The, see, the only problem with Max depends when it depends when it was made, but I think the the most recent Max, one of the problems with the batteries is soldered to the motherboard, which is what they've done in the Microsoft Surface now. The ba- that's why it takes like a week to get your battery changed in your computer these days if you take it back for service because they have to unsolder it off the motherboard. Why? It's how they get the computers thinner. Ah, that's how right. they get yeah, them okay, thinner. They have to literally desolder them, or they put a. New, Put a new board in them. 
pe- people want everything fucking thin, don't they? They want everything thin. They want everything small. They want, but they want it thin, small, super fast, loads of memory. They want everything in the world in something the size of. Do you know? I've had this conversation with people where, quite honestly, I don't believe there's any. We've had this conversation actually earlier where I was saying to Chris, I don't believe anything in the current Mac range. Uh, with the with the word pro attached to it is an actual pro computer except for the 25 grand you know uh, cheese grater right because quite honestly if they said to me here's the MacBook Pro I wouldn't care if it was an inch and a half thick uh, but because I'd want first of all I'd want an Ethernet port on it right can I because I'm gonna need to connect it to an actual wired network so I'm, like I'll have an yeah. Ethernet port thanks I'll have regular USB ports as well please so I can plug them in I'll have a card reader right because they don't even have card Wait, readers anymore. fucking dongle um, you? exactly right I'll have HDMI out I'll have um I'll have I'll have a, a, an SB diff out and, and or, like an optical out as well uh, because that to me is a pro computer. I don't care if it's an inch and a half thick. It's a pro computer. If you want something really skinny, get a MacBook Air. It's a f- wicked computer, right? But it's but like, if you want a pro computer, I need all them connectors to connect to the various yeah. pro things in my life. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's things like um, I'm not even sure if like if I bought a new Mac uh, laptop now whether I could use the sound card, the Focusrite sound card that I'm using, because it's USB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, right? you can't. So, uh, you just have to buy the I, dongle. I might have to get, I'd have to get another... I have to buy a dongle. I, why do I, like, just put the f***ing connectors on the computer. Because they're, trying to, they're or, trying to do everything USB-C. Or put the dongle in the box. Yeah, yeah. They should provide <laughs> the dongles with it, but it's all down to it being like fucking... Every, they want to go down the USB type C. But again, this goes back to everybody wants everything smaller, everything wants... Do you mean? They want everything, but then they're not willing to compromise to have that kind of fucking thin laptop like I don't I don't care about thin laptop I'll have one I'll have one I'll have an old brick laptop to you, be honest with you as long as it's rocking fast I don't give a shit you don't you don't mind if your laptop's got a bit of girth like I don't mind a bit of girth it's fine <laughs> you know what I mean if it's got a bit of junk in the trunk who cares you know <laughs> as long as it can as long as it can move fast enough Fuck I don't I. care so anyway like Dropbox the the advantages of Dropbox are that um, if that happens to you and you drop your computer down a flight, uh, you know, down an escalator in Munich Airport, it's completely fucked, smashed in half, and you think, oh my god, it's gone. You can literally walk into the Apple shop, buy a computer, install Dropbox, and then wait 140 hours for it to download everything that you've put in there to it. Or you can do what I do now, and my Dropbox lives on an external one terabyte hard drive. And I, um, and that means that um, it's separate from the computer, right? So, and that means that I can take that hard drive and plug it into a completely different laptop that's a clone of the one that I've got, and it just works. The other great thing about uh, Dropbox is it's got a thing called Smart Sync. So, you know, the thing I love about it, it doesn't matter whether you're on a Mac or a PC, it just comes up in the file system as a folder. It doesn't look like, it's not a server, it's not a cloud computer. But it's like an internal app or you can go on the website. I'm new to Dropbox. I've literally only started using it since we've started started making these shows. And and like, this show, it wouldn't really be possible without the use of Dropbox. No, I mean, we literally, the whole show is created with not just, because I've got a Dropbox folder on my computer called That Tattoo Show. And Chris has got the same folder on his computer. And literally, when I when I output my files, in, I just output them into a folder on my computer, and they appear on Chris's computer at the other end. He doesn't have to do anything. It's just they just sync. just have to wait for them to upload and happy days. Just shared folders, right? And 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 this is the beauty of it. The smart sync feature. Now, say you've got a 512 gig hard drive, but you've got a two terabyte Dropbox. Right, so like every year, at the end of every year, I take all of my files that I've worked on throughout the year. So at the end of the year, the way my jot form, it's in a thing that's called tattoo forms. In in inside there, there's a, cl- a folder with every client name, and inside that folder, there's the client yeah. form, their consent form, their artwork, any text files with notes of like what ink I used on that, what that particular red was, or anything like that. And I take all of that, I move it at the end of the year into a, a fo- another folder on my Dropbox called Yearly Backup, say 2019. Then you can use the Smart Sync feature. It's basically just, and I'm, I'm certainly, it'd be control click on a PC, but it's just a right, it might be just a right click actually. It, um, you right click it and you say oh, Smart Sync and you select Cloud Only. 
Yeah. And then it takes the it takes the files off your computer and just leaves them on the, the your Dropbox in the cloud. But the beauty of that is you can still see them on your computer. Yeah. You just if you want to open one of them, it has to download it again. But it means that if you go, oh, where's um Terry's Fox head tattoo. Hang on a minute. You find it. You go. Oh, it was. It. I did it. When did I do it? And you can go back into your iCal, work out when his last appointment was. Go. Oh, we did that in March, right? Hang on. It must be. It must be there because I, I drag them all forward as we go along. I go to March 2019, find it, and when I open it, it downloads it back into my Dropbox and resyncs it. Yeah. So then I can just go. Hang on a minute. What are we doing? Oh, the okay. We're just going to change this little bit of the tattoo, or we're going to add to it. So it means that I don't lose anything like that I can back it up it's backed up somewhere safe I don't have to worry about it but I can access it at a moment's notice from anywhere in the world on any computer in the world because you can access it through a web browser if you need so I can go to Chris's and access my Dropbox on his on his computer or yeah. his iPad and you know and all that sort of stuff it does cost £99 a year seriously consider it because it's Drop. This is the other thing is, if you delete a file, if you go, oh, I don't need that and delete it, and then the next day you go, oh, shit, I need that file, right? You can restore it, even though you've deleted it from your computer, hit empty trash and everything, you can restore that file for up to 30 days afterwards. And if you pay a bit more money, you can restore it forever. Fine. They keep every file that's ever been on it. So you can just go into another folder on, on the on the, the in the web browser and go show deleted files and you can find anything you've ever had. It's like fucking Boris Johnson here. It's like well you can delete your files, but they won't be deleted. <laughs> <laughs> but they will be deleted, but you can't delete them. But you can delete them, but you can't delete them. But seriously, like this is one once I was I was working on a website. This is in the early days of Dropbox. Uh, I was working on a website. I'd been working on this website for three months for a client, and I I caught the wrong key. Just oh. working quickly late at night, and I deleted the entire website. Three months work. I hit delete. I went. Do you sure you want to delete it? Yeah, no problem. Shit, no. Like this, it deleted the fucking whole website because oh. it was in my Dropbox. I hit restore folder and it restored the entire it's website. It's fucking back bad when that happens, isn't it? It's like fucking. Mate, I nearly shit my pants. Really I, did. Yeah. If, like honestly, if if it wasn't for Dropbox, I probably would have just sat there crying because I'd have had to do it all again. It's, yeah. And it's a nightmare. I've done because this like website wasn't painting. on the web at the time. It was running locally, right? So I'm just running it locally and demo it for the client, and yeah. I've deleted the whole fucking thing. You oh, know, man. That is awful. You know, imagine you spend 10 or 15 hours on a drawing, and then you and then you accidentally delete it off the desktop. Yeah. You know, like, if it's in your Dropbox, you're absolutely fine. That's why I would... That's why I... All of my work, music, video, tattooing, the lot, everything, all of my, all the company accounts, all of Karen's, you know, Excel files or Word documents, everything is done in the Dropbox. Mm. Karen's got a Dropbox account. I've got a Dropbox account. It's, it's in, for business. I think it's invaluable. If you make a living doing this and you can't afford to lose shit, then it's worth ninety nine quid a year, man, for the Fuck peace of mind and going. Do you know what? Fuck it. I'll just do it. Right, I'm going to do a stop start because I've got the last... I think this is kind of the end. Right, so if if for any reason uh, you decide I don't want to use Dropbox, uh, you, you know, you might, be, you might be asking yourself, is there any alternatives to Dropbox? So I'm just going to check now because I know that uh, Google definitely have one and oh, so do Microsoft. Google Drive. I can never remember the name of the Microsoft one. So you've got... Is it... Go um, is Hang on a minute. I'm just looking. Cloud computing. There you go. So, you've got uh, the free with your with your Gmail account. If you set that up at the beginning of this episode, is a thing called Google Drive. This is essentially exactly the same thing as Dropbox, but in my opinion, not quite as good. But it does it does work. It works in a very similar way. Um, I'm not certain if it does things like integrates with Jotform. I imagine it probably does because it's you know it's Google. They yeah. do tend to integrate with everything. Um, the there are and there are two others. One of them is OneDrive, which is the Microsoft yeah. one. So if you're a PC user, you might find that you know you prefer OneDrive. Um, it's it's free. 
as far as I know, uh, it comes with uh, it will come with your PC, or it will come with your if you've got a, uh, a Microsoft 365 account for like Office and Excel. Although if you're a tactist, I'm not sure why you would unless you do your own accounts. You'll get OneDrive for free with that. Uh, the other one. Uh, and, and, and honestly, quite possibly my least favourite one is iCloud Drive, which is the one that is is free with your Mac up to a certain level of storage. And I think OneDrive is free up to a certain level yeah, of storage. Yeah, I think it's like... I, I did see it the other day, because... Um, yeah. Not na- hit the name drop, like, but when we done the interview with Jesse Smith... <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> he said... Um, Chris is so ex- was so excited about this. I mean, th- I think this is going to come out after the episode. Chris was so excited about doing this. Do this I- like, and, and to be fair, realistically... If we, we no bullshit, doing in the grand scheme of things, he's the best. He's the best at what he does, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, and, and come like, on. I mean, he's a he's a banging tattooer. Considering like our channel has only been at this point has only been active for like about thirty days or some shit like that. Twenty five days. Twenty five days into starting a YouTube 25 channel. Twenty five days right? at this point. Yeah. To get because it. I'm trying to get a fucking custom URL and I can't get it until we've been there thirty days. Yeah, that's and insane. every morning I'm like, fucking hell, come on. But he's a nice guy. Like I, like I said, you'll you'll see, you'll hear us in in. in in, in, no, if you've watched it, if you haven't, go and watch it. But like you know, I met him years ago when he talked with my missus, and he is such a nice guy. Like my missus done, work, she, she done, really she done artwork for him for his for his shop. Like so, this like really? we've kept in touch. Wicked. Yeah, and uh, he, he is a really nice guy, and I was re- no, I absolutely appreciated the fact that it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, because like I asked quite, I you know obviously I've asked loads of artists that like I some that I look up to, some that I know, and you know. People that I would say that are nowhere near the level of Jesse Smith were like, nah, man, because uh, maybe they don't want to talk to us. Maybe they, they don't think our channel is at the level that it, is, it, it should be for them to get the exposure that they need. But for like somebody that I would say is at that level to kind of be like, fuck yes, man, that's fucking amazing. Like there was yeah, no hesitation yeah. and like appreciate that loads. Like that was fucking cool. Yeah, I do. Absolutely. You don't have to do it. You know what I mean? We have got a couple of other good, really good interviews oh, yeah. with similar artists who've who've said yes and really surprised us uh, you know because when you are a small channel it is one of the problems of like people go well do I kind of really be asked and it's nice when when you go wow like you know yeah, that's going to be amazing yeah, I was for the quite channel. shocked as yeah, well I was like, quite shocked that, that Jesse said yeah and he, and, and he and chatted to us for like four hours yeah you know, that's wicked. the cool thing like he took the time <laughs> I tell you what's another mind you know, as three well. in the morning by the time I got to bed after that conversation because of the time difference I had, he's, fucking, you know, he's yeah, in the I had a fucking that. power cut like it's like 20 minutes after we <laughs> finished up. power cut like <laughs> So, uh, we did digress, but I'll come back to it. Uh, it's very quick because it's my least favourite. If I'm absolutely honest with you, I think of the options here, uh, I think iCloud Drive is the shittest one of all of them. Uh, I, I, I hate the way it works. Um, I don't like the way it's integrated. I don't like the way it works on a Mac. It's very Mac-centric, so you can't use it if you're on a PC. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. If you're really, really in the Mac ecosystem, and I am, you know, I mean, I haven't got any PC stuff at all. Uh, you might want to use it. Uh, it's paid, and but I think, do you know what I mean? I, I just yeah, Mac for life, you know. But um, it's one of the products that they make that I just, I, I don't, I don't think it's right. It's, um, you know, it's not Dropbox, and I think it's as expensive as Dropbox. So I'd, I'd much rather use Dropbox to be honest with you, because it's, you know, their their stuff is the bomb. Um, I will re- we'll reiterate this is the boring episode this is the boring setup stuff but once this is done I promise you if you go through this and set it up every artist that I've sat down with and set this up for now swears by all this stuff that yeah. they use you know what I mean when I I showed this to Sam Barber a few years ago and explained how Dropbox works she's like the biggest advocate of it now she's, <laughs> but, and Sam's really not you know bless her she's not particularly technical with that she does a lot of it just through sheer feel and how things are I showed her how it works and, and her and Jack both uh, this Jack Connolly my, another mate of mine they both were, were like show me what it works and I, I kind of showed them how it works and they, they're massive advocates Lucas um uh, lost everything on his computer and then I, t- I turned him on to like you wouldn't have lost it if you'd have had a Dropbox so he signed up for it as well and now he's a, he's like it's the greatest thing well I've signed up to it I, I signed, up, signed up, to up to it, it yeah, yeah. you know once 
Once you get it set up and you get all these things hooked together and doing all these things without you having to think about them, they really are set it and leave it, forget about it and just get on with the creative stuff, which is the whole point of what we're doing. And that will be like what we do in the next episode yeah. is getting on to being creative. But you know that the computers are doing this boring work in the background, yeah. but keeping you informed of everything that's going on. And so... I'm very aware that I have done nothing but talk for probably about 35 minutes. So uh, I'm going to let, for, for once, I'm going to let Chris do the uh, do the wrap up because I'm, if I'm quite honest with you, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Talking for too so long. So over to you, mate. <laughs> so yeah, I hope, right, you've learned as much as I've just learned from this video because there was a lot of stuff in there. Um, what Paul has just discussed is a lot of stuff that I didn't know about. Some things I did. Um, so I've actually learned quite a lot from this. And if you have, remember, hit that like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell, hit the bell. Uh, for notifications and all that shit. And uh, yeah, we really, really appreci appreciate... Fucking camera, so we really, really appreciate you guys tuning in watching us chat shit and also talk about really informative things every now and then you know between all the bullshit there is some good information <laughs> we really appreciate it and uh, yeah thanks for watching anything you want to say uh, i hope it's helped you out we're trying to keep this uh, tutorial series really really information dense and just for you you tattooists out there and trying to get you you know, like a little bit nearer to the digital age. Uh, I hope it's helped you. If you've got any questions, please, please, please ask me in the comments down below. I will answer them as fully as I possibly can. I really hope it, it's helped you out, guys. Yeah, happy day. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I've been Chris. And I've been Paul. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.